Hi everyone, welcome to this class on force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So sounds like a really long topic, right? But I'm going to make it super easy for you because you're going to break down this thing and really understand what is the force on a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field. So let's get these physics concepts crystal clear. Before we begin, I just want to say, do check out the other courses on our website. You know, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for CBSE class 8, 9 and 10. So guys, if you haven't taken the other courses, do take them and also do share it out with your friends. For the ICC students, once again, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for classes 8, 9 and 10. So please do share out these courses. And if you guys want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding, both are great languages to learn computer programming and we have physics and chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE, which is the international board. So do share out our courses with your friends. Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. We also have a Hindi channel. It's called Manucha Academy Hindi. So if you're interested in Hindi videos, do subscribe to that. Do share it out and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. With that, let's get started. So first let's understand what is magnetic effect of electric current. All of you know what is electric current? The flow of charge, just like now in your house, electricity is flowing in the wires. That is called, we say the current that's flowing, we call it electric current, the flow of charge or electrons. We know current has many different effects. What do you guys know? One is the heating effect of current. It heats up like on the toasters, your geysers, Right? Even the old tungsten bulbs, they heat up and they also emit light. So the other is called lighting effect of current. Then you have chemical effect, what you know as electrolysis. And today we are looking at the magnetic effect of electric current. This is quite magical because electric current affects magnetic fields. Right? It affects, you know, so electric current has effect on magnets. So that's why we say there is a magnetism or what we call as electromagnetism. So very interesting. So let's talk about that. What is the magnetic effect of electric current? And this is basically the famous Orsted's experiment. So what did he do? So let's say if you guys have a circuit like this. So this is your circuit. So there you can see this is your voltage supply or the battery here V. This is your switch. So when I put down the switch or when I turn the circuit on, What's going to happen? The bulb here, so this is my bulb, the bulb will definitely glow. You guys agree? So we have made the switch on, the bulb glows. Why? Because there is current flowing in the wires. So we know that electric current is flowing in the wires and by convention we show from positive to negative, even though we know it's a lie because electrons, the electronic current is from negative to positive, but we are showing the lie or by convention we say, you know, it's like water flows from high potential to low potential. Similarly, current flows, we say from high electric potential to low potential. So basically I'm teaching you a lie right now. Anyways, so we have talked about that. That is the conventional direction of current, which you should always mark. Now there's something very interesting that when this current was not flowing, so when the switch was off and Orsted bought this compass near it, nothing happened. Okay. So the compass normally pointed in the north-south direction. The compass needle was like this in the north-south direction when there is no flow of current. That means when the switch is off, the compass needle is in the north-south direction. But when I turned on this switch, something very interesting, they saw that this needle deflects like this. So this we call as the deflection in the needle. So what is observed? A deflection in the needle, which means that the current is affecting a compass needle. And you know, this magnetic compass is made up of a tiny magnet. So it's almost like if you were, you know, suppose your friend has this uh, compass needle and he wants to find the north south direction and to irritate him, you bring a magnet near it, what's going to happen? the needle is going to go crazy or it's going to get deflected because a magnet will affect the compass. Don't irritate your friend, but you know, it can cause this kind of deflection. Same thing here. This current causes an irritation to that needle or a deflection because it doesn't point in the normal north-south. It shows a deflection. That means this circuit here or this current is sort of behaving like a magnet. 
because we know that only a magnet should affect a magnet right only a magnet can affect a magnet just like we know charges uh, like charges you know they repel each other unlike charges attract same we you know north pole south pole they attract each other north pole north pole or like poles repel each other so this kind of thing should only happen with the magnet why is it happening with the current this is what is the magnetic effect of current so the scientists analyzed and said that basically this current carrying wire if you just look at this part of the wire and ignore the rest of the circuit for a moment so i want all of you guys to focus on this wire this wire is carrying current what are we observing or what did mr orsted observe there is a deflection in the compass needle so when current flows and there is a deflection in the compass needle it is clear that this current carrying wire is creating some sort of magnetic field around it it is creating a magnetic field and you guys know what is the shape of the magnetic field of a current carrying wire you can watch my previous video on that it's concentric circles centered around the wire so that's what i've drawn here how do we know the direction of this magnetic field the youtube like button <laughs> no it's called the maxwell's right hand thumb rule okay so what does maxwell's right hand thumb rule say keep your right hand like this thumb pointing in the direction of the current so let's say your current direction is up then the directions in which your fingers curl so we can see clearly our current is pointing upwards the direction in which my fingers curl is the direction of the magnetic field so clearly the direction of the magnetic field is going to be like this so that's the direction of the current this is the direction of the magnetic field how my fingers curl around this wire that's called maxwell's right hand thumb rule so clearly we can see here because this current carrying wire starts behaving like a magnet just like a magnet has a magnetic field around it this current carrying wire has a magnetic field around it so it will deflect this compass or you can think it in simple words it acts like a magnet so it is definitely going to cause an attraction or a repulsion on the compass needle this was the famous orsted's experiment which found this very interesting connection between current and magnetism or what we call as magnetic effect of electric current also known as electromagnetism because electricity is producing magnetism it's like harry potter magic electricity is producing magnetism around it it's affecting a magnetic needle not an electric needle it's affecting a magnetic needle so only when the switch is on when the switch is off there's no deflection okay only when the switch is on which we call it as a what is that known as when the switch is on we call this as a closed circuit so when the switch is on closed circuit this flow of electrons the electrons which are flowing in the wire they are creating this magnetic field around it now exactly why is electron creating magnetic field around it we are not going into the details of that but you are saying that this is what the scientists observe we are looking at it from an observation level right now what's the physics behind it that you learn in higher classes right so there is this electricity is producing a magnetic effect because electric magnetic fields they are related but the topic of today is not electromagnetism or magnetic field of electric current that we have done in the previous video so what's that the topic of today's video is force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field so long name let's break it down step by step so that your concept is going to be crystal clear okay so first thing for this you just imagine or draw this simple picture this is enough to explain you the chapter right this topic so what does it say here you have a magnet so let's say this is the north pole of the magnet this is the south pole okay so it, it doesn't mean i've cut down the two poles like this it could be a magnet like this let's say this is a horseshoe magnet where you know the magnet is sort of if you think it in 3d it's something like this you guys getting the picture this is the north pole this is the south pole and we have kept a wire or you can say a conductor between this so because we know that monopoles can't exist you can't have a just a north pole or a south pole so it could be a horseshoe kind of magnet like this or you could also visualize this as this is a north south and this is maybe a south north there are two magnets like this and you know you have kept them like this but we'll not worry about how the magnet is formed this is our north pole and south pole of a certain magnet 
and we have kept a wire here. So now what we are interested in, this wire is carrying current or this conductor is carrying current. So I am going to mark it with the letter I here. I is the symbol of current and that's why it's shown in yellow color because it's carrying current. Okay. So you have placed a current carrying wire or a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. What is the magnetic field? The region between this north and south pole and we know the magnetic field lines they go from the north to south. So let's go ahead and draw these magnetic field lines in green color here let's say. So this is our magnetic field. So magnetic field which is from north to south, current carrying conductor is marked here with the symbol I. This is my current carrying conductor here. Now the scientists observe something very interesting that when you keep a current flowing conductor like a simple copper wire in a magnetic field, they observe that this wire shows movement again like you know magic Harry Potter magic that this wire is not stationary it is moving and it's not because you know the fans are running or you know you're trying to blow the wire or move it around it's literally moving and when you turn it off the movement there's no movement there if you take a thin wire and you turn it on there is a movement now whether it's front or back we'll talk about it later but there is motion in this wire if there is motion in the wire do you guys agree there has to be a force Otherwise, Newton will very get very angry with us. That how can there be motion without force, right? He'll say, you're not following my laws of motion. So definitely there is a force on this current carrying wire because the scientists observe that every time they switch on the current, there is motion, either forward or backward, whichever direction, when placed in a magnetic field. So if you remove the magnet, no motion. It's not like the wires in your house are dancing around, right? Because you're switching on the current. It's not like behind the walls they're moving or they're dancing around. If you place it in a magnetic field, there will be motion. Of course, you know, you'll have to have, uh, you take a thin wire, the current has to be strong enough. There are conditions, but there is definitely movement. If there is movement, there should be force. So is at least the topic clear to you? Force on a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field. Now, again, you may ask that question. How come this wire is moving or why is there a force? Can you guys think and tell me? Why do you think there is a force when it is placed in a magnetic field? So let's just say for example, when you do this experiment, let's say the again current I'm marking is conventional current, that big lie, you know, from positive to negative. So let's say the current is flowing from in this direction, conventional current. And the scientists observe that when this happens and you have placed it in this kind of north-south setup, they saw that, hey, the movement is outwards, so I can say my force is outwards. Okay, but the question is, why is there force at all? Why is it moving in the first place? So one important thing for you guys to understand is, remember we talked about magnetic effect of current, that when there is a current carrying wire, we talked about it, the current carrying wire or a conductor behaves like a magnet. It has a magnetic field around it. So if this current carrying wire has a magnetic field around it, it behaves like a magnet and you place it between in a near a magnet, won't the two magnets play with each other, attraction or repulsion? Just like if you play with two magnets, either they'll attract each other or repel. Yes, same thing is going to happen. Here. Because just the simple concept that this current carrying wire behaves like a magnet. This guy behaves like a magnet. And you have placed it in a magnetic field. So obviously there is going to be an interaction between the two. So there will be force on the current carrying wire as well as there will be force on the magnet. Right? Equal and opposite forces. Otherwise Newton's third law, Newton will again get angry. So that is why there will be a force here. Clear? Because two magnets are playing with each other. Now again, what is the direction of this force? Is it going to be outwards into the plane of the paper, upward, downward? So there is a rule based on that, right? We'll talk about that rule. So till now we have learned that if you place a current carrying wire or a conductor, that means one which is carrying current in a magnetic field, there is a force. But what is the direction of the force? Fleming's left hand rule predicts it in a very simple way. Beautiful rule, right? So I want all of you to pick up your left hand like this, not your right hand, keep your right hand down, pick up your left hand like this, 
and you know move the fingers you know stretch out your fingers like this so this is like hand yoga okay so i want all of you to stretch out your fingers like this can you guys see it clear so have your fingers like this where all the fingers are 90 degree to each other even if your fingers are paining a little bit please do it and they should be all 90 degree not like you know not like this not like this not not you know joint or joint together all 90 degree to each other everybody just like you know this picture here so the angle between your fourth finger and the center finger 90 right four finger center finger 90 the angle between your four finger thumb here 90 degree so all these please keep it at 90 these three fingers you especially are important this is called the four finger or the index finger the center or the middle finger right so i'm going to call it the four finger the center finger and this is the thumb i know the hand will pain like this right but no pain no gain so please do that right so everybody here now one very simple rule you can remember it in a very simple way this one we call as the this is called our four finger so rather than calling it index finger please call it four finger the four finger will remind you that this is f for four finger f for magnetic field so this finger is going to represent our magnetic field okay whichever direction the magnetic field in we, our job is to arrange this four finger in that field direction this one i'm not going to call the middle finger i'll call it the center finger because c for center finger c for current so whichever direction your center finger is in so this one so this is representing our magnetic field this guy is representing the current again c for center finger c for current easy to remember and thumb we can say thumb is the most powerful thing right or if you have to apply a force or push something right so thumb we can remember is force so this thumb guy is representing force that's it so if you align your left hand in such a way that your forefinger represents the magnetic field that is from north to south direction this is wherever the current flows automatically the thumb will point you so you might yeah you'll have to turn your hand in accordance to the diagram so again you might have to do some you know twisting and yoga here with the fingers of your hand but you will get automatically the direction of the force so let's apply it and see if this force should really be outwards let's check if it's correct so what is the trick here very simple trick don't you know operate all the three fingers together go one by one so that you don't get confused magnetic field we said four finger represents magnetic field so everybody please align your four finger along the north south direction okay everybody right you can just align your four finger next the center finger should represent the current current is downwards so you can see my center finger is downwards four finger still aligned with the field it should not be that you know because you went aligning this thing you change the other thing no they should both be aligned then finally your thumb you can collapse your thumb and stretch it out at the end whichever way or you can keep it out stretched everything like this so make sure four finger align with the magnetic field center finger align downwards with the current can you see your thumb is automatically pointing outwards it's like trying to hit you out right so oh, therefore your force outwards. so this is a 3d diagram it's not that force is parallel or upwards it is all in 3d it is in the third direction and guys when solving questions when doing a test do not feel shy to do this you know some of you think oh uh, i might be it's like you know i'm cheating in the exam or something no this is a rule you're supposed to use this so in your physics exam if you're not doing this it's okay look crazy and do this otherwise you're crazy not to do this right so make sure you guys are aligning your and again remember to tap left hand if you do it with right hand you get the opposite answer so how do you finally write the force do not write it towards us yeah so right now i'm standing here so it's towards you so we usually write this outward force or sometimes even you know we represent it like a cross represents inward force but cross is usually used for an inward magnetic field so sometimes you know magnetic field may be shown as cross means inward field dot means the field is outwards so these notations are there you know inward and outward which are typically used for magnetic field so whole job of fleming's left hand rule is not to tell us what is the value of the force what is the direction of the force and it's not only about force sometimes the question may give you force is this current is this find the direction of field so if any two things are known you can find the third unknown okay but it's all about direction 
And please remember with this simple trick, F for forefinger, F for field, C for center finger, C for current, thumb is the powerful one, thumb is for force. In this example, force is not parallel to the magnetic field, it is outward. So if you put your hand in 3D, you can see it. Magnetic field, current, my thumb is pointing outwards, towards you guys, towards the camera here. So it's outwards. Great question. In this situation, can the force ever be parallel to the magnetic field? No. The force cannot be parallel to the, it's always in the third direction. So that's why these are all in, you know, it's like almost a 3D diagram. So if this is X, let's say this is the Y direction. So here current is on the negative Y. And then let's say this is the Z axis. So just like in coordinate plane, you talk about X and Y axis. Here there's a third axis, Z axis. So force here is along the third axis. For in this example, it's the Z. Now, can you guys predict in this same diagram, what is the force or what is the direction of the force on this current carrying conductor? So let's say the current is switched on. So current is flowing through this conductor. This is my magnetic uh, poles, north and south pole. Can you guys predict what will be the direction of the force? Again, using Fleming's left hand rule. So don't be lazy, pick up your left hand, align it with the screen here and try to predict what will be the direction of the force. So what is the simple trick? First, you know, make sure you know the direction of the field, current and everything. Remember, magnetic field is always from North Pole to South Pole. So let me draw that first. So I'm going to draw the magnetic field direction, which is from North to South. So you guys can see the magnetic field is clearly from North to South. The conventional current, and again I repeat always, this is the conventional current. If they give you electrons are flowing downwards, so current is upwards, right? If electrons are flowing this way, current is downward. So make sure when you're using Fleming's, Fleming's left hand rule, the conventional current is always considered, not the electronic current, okay? So this is my eye, this is my magnetic field. Again, we're going to use Fleming's left hand rule. So let's align it, go one finger at a time. So first align your four finger, four finger in the same direction, north to south, right? Of the magnetic field. This time the current is upwards. So I need to change, keeping the four finger the same. See how I'm turning my hand and aligning the center finger in the direction, in the upward direction to the current. Keeping the four finger same. So you have to keep your four finger. It cannot be that when you started doing this, you know, your four finger went somewhere else or you're, you're not sure. Keeping the four finger same, you just turn your hand. I know it might pain a little bit, but align your current. Now, where is your thumb? Can you guys see where's my thumb? So the thumb is pointing into the board. Can you guys see? It's pointing into your screen right now because the current is upward. So current upward, this thing, you guys can see the thumb is at the back. So that's why you can't see it. It's at the back. So clearly we can see there will be a force on this current carrying conductor, but it's going to be this time the opposite. The force is going to be inwards. Once again, using Fleming's left hand rule, because what did we see? Magnetic field was this way. So this was my magnetic field, north to south. Current direction is upwards. And the force turns out to be inwards. So you can write forces inwards, or sometimes you say into the plane of the paper, into the board, you usually don't write because it's your paper you're writing on, right? So you can say forces inwards, or we say, into the plane of paper that's it and please write also if they ask you you know how did you get it not just by guess by applying fleming's left hand rule and once again reminding you don't feel scared to use the rule in the exam you have to do it and based on that you write please do not do it you know mentally and oh you're just thinking in 3d like that don't do that please pick up your left hand and only your left hand so if they give you electronic current you point your uh, center finger, the current direction is, should be taken opposite. That's a very important question. Sometimes they trick you by giving you the wrong current. But Fleming's left hand rule always uses, this is always conventional current. So let me write that here. This is not just simple uh, electronic current. This is conventional current. Okay, direction of conventional current from positive to negative. So to, uh, why is there a force we understood because both are behaving like magnets. But in Fleming's left hand rule, we don't consider, you know, attraction, repulsion, where are the poles? 
it directly gives us in one shot what is going to be the direction of force and if you have if you have attached the wire to two ends obviously it will not move but if it is light enough the current is strong enough or the force is big enough it's definitely going to move let's try another question so that you guys practice fleming's left hand rule i have given you another diagram here you need to find again it's only only going to give us the direction of the force so can you guys predict what will be the direction of this force on this current carrying conductor so here is the direction of current i so please try this question so i want all of you to write in the chat tamogna has the right answer anurag patil correct basushi correct piyush sharma right krista is correct shubham sharma correct i think again i am also trying the fleming's left hand rule here so let me also try see again to predict the answer do it step by step first be sure you are given the direction of current again this is conventional current right electrons are flowing the opposite way if they ever give you that but what is the direction of the magnetic field magnetic field is always from north to south not south to north so please make sure you guys draw the field this time this way it is opposite from the previous question right so we need to mark from north to south so i'm going to draw these lines here so magnetic field is from north to south okay current is given here again arrange your fleming's left hand rule according to this diagram and go step by step so first always the trick is go for the field magnetic field so four finger in the direction of magnetic field have you guys got it this way so your four finger should be pointing from north to south the center finger is pointing downwards but the current flow here is upwards so i need to turn my hand so that my center finger points upwards four finger from north to south center finger upwards where is my thumb pointing outwards can you guys see so the force direction is in the direction of the thumb clearly outwards here fourth finger center finger thumb is outwards so definitely we know the force here on the current carrying conductor is going to be outwards outwards means it's going to be out of this digital board or out of the plane of the paper so we usually write this force as you can either write outwards or out of the plane of the paper so what is an interesting conclusion we saw that when you change the direction of the current see we changed it from downward to upwards keeping the pole same the force direction changes from outward to inward it becomes opposite and when you keep you know the current direction same but you switch the poles again the force direction changes so if you keep one thing fixed obviously if you switch the other so if they ask you you know question that if i switch the current now obviously force will become inwards and you can check it with fleming's left hand rule right so if i make the current downwards thumb points inwards now so this is a very interesting thing that you see and you can automatically get it using fleming's left hand rule so the whole goal of the rule was you know given the direction of magnetic field and current you can predict the direction of force or given force and current you can predict the direction of magnetic field or whatever combination next let's talk about what are the factors affecting the force on a current carrying conductor so we've talked about all direction and stuff right so what are the factors affecting the force again let's consider the uh, an example this is let's say the north south uh, pole so make sure you guys draw the magnetic field and we typically draw it as these parallel lines to show that you know it's a uniform magnetic field because there are parallel lines which are equidistant so this is my magnetic field here from north to south this is the current let's say current is i the current is flowing downwards now what are the factors affecting the force so we know the current uh, force direction will be what again from left hand rule uh, this is north to south current is downwards so force is going to be outwards my thumb is pointing outwards so that's pretty clear here but what does this force depend on or the value the magnitude of force again scientists did the experiment because science is all about experiment right you may predict something but you need to verify it and they saw that or what do you guys think if i double this magnetic field if i use a magnet which is doubly strong what do you think will the force increase or decrease if i use a magnet that is two times stronger will this outward force increase or decrease 
definitely it's going to increase because you can even imagine this wire is behaving like a magnet so if you bring another magnet right you which is two times stronger obviously the force should be doubled so the first factor is force is directly proportional to the magnetic field magnetic field is usually represented by the symbol b don't ask me why you know there are these all these conventions or b actually represents the magnetic field strength do you guys know what is the unit of magnetic field strength what is it measured in hint is uh, elon musk is your hint what is magnetic field strength uh, strength of magnetic field what unit is it measured in is not in musk what's the name of his car company tesla okay so the answer is this is a magnetic field which is measured in tesla that's the si unit very good so force is directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field the scientists also found that if you double the current guess what force doubles if you half the current force halves so again i can clearly say that force is directly proportional to the current current what the current flowing in the wire so force is directly proportional let me use the same colors here force directly proportional to i force directly proportional to the magnetic field and next if we talk about the length of the conductor but in length it's a very important point it's not how long your wire is how long the wire is within the magnetic field so let's say the magnetic field is from here to here so i'm considering this length of the wire here this is the length of the wire in the magnetic field so there we saw that force is directly proportional to the length of the wire so directly proportional to the magnetic field to the current flowing and to the length of the wire placed in the magnetic field so obviously if you use a uh, the wire is longer in the magnetic field or the magnetic field's length is longer where the current is flowing through force will be more again scientists have checked this so these are first the three important factors and you if you combine them you can easily remember them as force is directly proportional to bill magnetic field strength current strength and the length of the conductor placed in the magnetic field so force is directly proportional to bill easy to remember but there's another factor also what is the last factor it matters in what angle you place the current carrying wire do you place it like this some of you are thinking what if i place the current carrying wire parallel or at an angle so till now we have kept placing the current carrying wire always you have noticed if you notice it is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field did you guys see all the diagrams that we did the current carrying wire was always perpendicular to the magnetic field and there's a reason behind that it's not just by coincidence because the last factor is the angle between the current carrying wire and the magnetic field so let's write that fourth point before we write this bill relation the force is directly proportional it's actually directly proportional to sine of theta you guys have heard of this trigonometry thing sometimes you don't even have to know that you just need to know it depends on angle but for extra knowledge it depends on the sine of the angle let me use a different color there where theta is the angle between the current carrying conductor and the magnetic field in this case what is the angle 90 degree how much is sin theta sin of 90 1 so when do you think the force will be maximum at what angle so we can say that force is maximum or we can say force is directly proportional to the force is directly proportional to b i l sin theta magnetic field current strength length of the conductor and sine of the angle or we can say k, uh, k uh, b i l sin theta if k is 1 right many times you'll see this formula force is if we take the constant as 1 or force is some constant k times b i l sin theta and usually we take this constant as 1 so there you go so this clearly tells us this relation that force is maximum when the current is the conductor is perpendicular to the magnetic field that's why we have been placing it like this and what do you think if you place the conductor along the magnetic field what will be the force 
So based on this, you guys can clearly see that when theta is 90 degree, force is maximum. But when theta is 0 degree, when it's along the magnetic field, sine theta is going to be sine 0 is 0, the force is going to be 0. And obviously, anywhere in between, if you keep 30, 60, you know, it's going to be less than maximum, but definitely more than 0. Electric motor, the electric motor, we have a video on that. So please check it out. But it's actually based on the topic we have just done. So let's see how is the electric motor works on this force on a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field. It's actually very simple. Let's take a look at it. So again, you have a magnetic field created by two poles. And let's say this time I don't place a simple current carrying wire. I'm going to place a rectangle like this. So let's say we're going to place a wire like this which is in the shape of a rectangle between the ends of this magnetic field. So let's say this is north-south. So if you place, you know, this kind of uh, rectangular coil placed in a magnetic field and again this is, you know, attached to a circuit. So obviously current is flowing through it. So current will be flowing through it. Let's say this is the positive negative end. So I can say this will be current direction will be like this I. This current flows through here I. Current flows downward here and through this part. So this is my current flow. Now let's carefully look at this rectangular part, right? So let's say even this could be, you know, outside the coil, but we are just going to care about this outside the magnetic field. But let's first look at this rectangular part. A, B, C, D. So if you look at this rectangle A, B, C, D, you can see that it is made up of four sides. So you can think there are four wires here, A, B, B, C, C, D. And if you include, ignore this gap, D, A, don't break it down, just think D, A. Okay. Now, will those four sides face, uh, experience any force when placed in a magnetic field? Can you guys tell me? So let's look at each side. So we have got these sides A, B, BC, CD and DA. And now let's look at talk about the force that they experience. So let's go step by step. AB, what will be the direction of force on AB? Will it experience a force? You can see AB is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So maximum force. Again, we're going to use Fleming's left hand rule. So Fleming's left hand rule is going to be magnetic field north south. Four finger, the center finger should be, so four fingers along the magnetic field center finger along the direction of current. So I'm going to turn it up like that. And clearly the thumb is pointing inwards. So the force is going to be inwards here. So clearly we can say the force here is going to be inwards. There you go. The force is clearly inwards on this conductor. So for AB, I can say the force is going to be inwards. Now what about the BC part? What is the force on BC? So if you try using Fleming's left hand rule, so you can see this is north south, four fingers arranged. Current is in the same direction, but Fleming's left hand rule says you should hold everything 90 degree. If you do this, this doesn't mean force is going to be out. Because remember that BIL sine theta rule, if the conductor is parallel to the magnetic field, angle is zero. So force is zero. So force on BC is very easy. It's simply zero because it's parallel to the magnetic field. Do you guys agree? Force on BC is zero. What about the force on CD? One, you could do Fleming's left hand rule, but here you could be smart. AB is inwards, so CD should be outwards, opposite. And you can apply Fleming's left hand rule, north, south, four finger, current downwards. You can see your thumb is pointing outwards. Okay. So clearly, the thumb is pointing outwards here thumb is clearly going to be in the outwards direction. There you go. And what about DA? Current is in, you know, in the direction, right? In from D to A, magnetic field, but they are again parallel, even though they are in opposite directions parallel. So force on DA is going to be zero. So which part is really facing the force? AB and CD. Is the force on AB greater or CD? The magnetic field is uniform, it's same. The currents are same. BIL sine theta, the lengths are same. Angle is 90. So force are equal. Do you guys agree the forces are equal on AB and CD? 
Yes or no? So you can see this force on AB is inwards, force on CD is outward but equal and opposite. So if this is 10 Newton, this is 10 Newton. If this is 20 Newton, this is 20 Newton. Now I want you guys to try a very simple experiment. Please try it right now. Keep your pen on the table. I hope you are having a pen. You have been writing this down. Keep your pen or pencil on the table and apply two equal and opposite forces on the ends of the pencil or pen. So one force here at one end and an equal opposite on the other end. So I want all of you to try this. Let's say you keep your pen or pencil like this. So let's say this is your whatever pencil and I want you to apply equal and opposite forces on the two ends with your two fingers. You can use two different fingers. Apply two forces. What happens to your pencil? Can you guys tell me right now? Please try. Put your pencil on the table or pen on the table. Apply two equal and opposite forces on the two ends. Just like this coil is facing two equal and opposite forces on the two ends. Or you can apply it to your pencil box. Anything. Awesome guys. Your pencil is spinning. It's rotating. It's turning. So when you have equal and opposite forces, what you guys observe? That this guy is in rotational motion. How did the rotational motion happen? Equal and opposite forces by physics. Because the net force is zero, they will cancel each other. But because they are applied at a you know, distance apart from each other, this is what in, in physics known as a couple. Two equal and opposite forces separated by a distance form a couple. A couple produces rotational motion. So what we are seeing something very interesting here. Equal and opposite forces form a couple. So equal and opposite forces they produce or form a couple which causes rotational motion and that's what's happening here. And so this is how, so this produces, the couple will cause a rotational motion. Couple in physics is a proper term, doesn't mean two here, right? Or we're not talking about husband, wife, couple, right? This couple means uh, equal and opposite forces and that causes rotational motion. And this is how your electric motor works. If you've understood this, you've understood the electric motor. That's it, right? And these two sides, they don't contribute to the force. Done. This is exactly how electric motor is designed, which is used in toys, used in the mixie, washing machine. In a simplistic way, it basically looks like this. And it's based on the principle. What is it based on? If you place a current carrying conductor or a coil here, we say, right? So this is a rectangular coil. So if you place a rectangular coil in a magnetic field, when you pass current, it produces rotational motion. And that's how a electric motor, which runs on electricity, produces kinetic energy or rotational kinetic energy. That's how it works. Why is it rotating? That's what I told you. Try this experiment. Just place your pen, uh, pencil or pen or pencil box and push it, you know, in two directions, right? Equal opposite forces. So one force this way, one force the other way. If you apply it, you'll see the thing will rotate. Same things happening here this coil starts rotating and this coil is then connected to you know whatever you want to rotate you want to make some lemon uh, you know some milkshake or whatever the mixy so this is all connected there right grinder mixer washing machine so this is how and so how is the electric motor working you turn it on you pass current through it the, and this current uh, current carrying rectangular coil is placed between two magnets or in a magnetic field that's how it causes rotation obviously how will you get a great force in the motor so you will pass high current, you make sure the magnetic field is strong. The other trick they use, it's not just one coil. Okay, this is a very simplistic diagram. So watch my video on motor. There is actually n number of coils. So once, twice, three, many times it is coiled around or wound around. So obviously you can think that if you put uh, 500 coils, the force will be 500 times more. Or 100 coils, 100 times F. Because each wire will get a force of F. So hope you guys enjoyed this class and understood the concept of force on a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field. So this concept and how it can be applied very easily to understand how do electric motors work. And do check out the other courses on our website. We have physics, chemistry, biology and maths. 
for CBSC class 8, 9 and 10. So guys, if you haven't taken our courses, do take them and do share it out with your friends. For the ICC students, once again, we have physics, chemistry, biology and maths for classes 8, 9 and 10. So please do share out our courses. And if you guys want to learn coding, we have Python programming, we have Java coding. Both are great languages to learn computer programming. And we have physics and chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE, which is the international board. So do share out our courses with your friends. Make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. We also have a Hindi channel. It's called Manucha Academy Hindi. So please subscribe to that as well if you're interested in Hindi videos. And do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So stay connected with Manucha Academy and just keep learning.